Happy Black History Month, y'all. This is Pastor Jay, and for Black History on this Sunday, uh, we are going to be celebrating Charles Octavius Booth. I'll be reading a biographical sketch of Reverend Charles Octavius Booth, also known as an Apostle of Uplift. Charles Octavius Booth was born into slavery on June 13, 1845 in Mobile County, Alabama. Booth encountered Christianity at a young age in, quote, a Baptist church in a forest where white people and colored people sat together and commune to wash each other's feet, end quote. However, he only converted to Christianity after the end of the Civil War. He was baptized in 1866 and ordained as a minister in 1868. Booth knew that although his experience of slavery was mild compared to many others, a loosely shackled slave was still a slave nonetheless. He was clear in his indictment of the whole white America for the conditions of black brothers and sisters. As a matter of fact, in 1865, he wrote, the North and South joined heartily in the work of binding their black brother with chains of cruel bondage, removing him from his freedom and from his gods and chaining him to the chariot wheels of Christian civilization." End quote. Booth's writings raised an important question. Could a society that enslaved human beings truly consider itself Christian? Following the Civil War, Booth was strongly concerned with the uplift of the African Americans attempting to offer basic literacy, religious, and moral education. He helped establish the Colored Baptist Missionary Convention of the State of Alabama in the early 1870s as a ministerial alliance of Black Baptist churches. He also published what is considered the first theological book written by an African American, Plain Theology for Plain People, written in 1819. Plain Theology's goal was to articulate the doctrines of our holy religion with simplicity of argument and simplicity of language. Charles Octavius Booth stands as an example of a preacher dedicated to moving the needs of his people and giving them the spiritual tools they need to survive in a hostile secular world. This Sunday morning, we pause and we celebrate Charles Octavius Booth. Charles Octavius Booth is actually one of the people in church history that are just in complete obscurity. He was born a slave. He actually learned how to read on the etchings of a tin plate. There was uh, a couple of teachers who were boarding at the plantation where he worked and what have you. And they, under the cover of night, taught him how to read on a plate. And then because of his ability to read, which is actually illegal at the time, he was able to be become an errand boy at a law office. And at that time, the law was basically you know, based upon uh, the New Testament, in particular, the Book of Romans. And so Booth, he actually uh, was in this law office and reading, but in particular, the Bible. And through that experience, he comes to saving faith in Christ. And so from there, he, uh, you know, um, he was freed you know, at emancipation in 1865. And then from there, he becomes a church planter, we would say today. He starts uh, two different churches, one of, one of which is Dexter Avenue Baptist Church, which is the the, the church where the Montgomery bus boycott started after the arrest of uh, Rosa Parks. And then, as we know now, the 20th pastor is Martin Luther King Jr. And so the church is no longer called Dexter Avenue Baptist Church, Baptist church but King Memorial Baptist Church. 
And then from there, he was a scholar. Um, he wrote uh, a couple of books that we have. And so what was fantastic is that he was a, uh, a church planter, a bridge builder, because he was um, a bridge builder with Alabama Southern Baptists while he was working with the uh, Colored Baptist of Alabama. And then he wrote a book called The Cyclopedia, of, you know, which is basically an encyclopedia of African-American Baptist pastors in uh, Alabama. And then because he was such a learned man, he decided to become an itinerant teacher. And so he would teach in all these little villages in rural areas around uh, the larger, uh, just in Alabama for the most part. And then he wrote a handbook for theology so he can have an orderly account for the, the students that he had who were predominantly sharecroppers. And that was Plain Theology for Plain People. And so that book was published in uh, 1890. And so now I'm grateful that we actually have it back in print today. So Charles Octavius Booth was significant in my estimation because he sort of gives us a window into the unknown. There, uh, There's many people that say, man, I wish we had more Charles Octavius Booths out there. And I said, well, who's to say that there wasn't? 